Hello everybody and welcome back to another deck guide. Today we're going to be talking about um, a Witcher Northern Realms deck. Now this is going to be using Uprising as a leader ability which is actually a very strong leader ability in this deck but we'll discuss a little bit why in a second. Um, so what does this leader ability do exactly? Boost an allied unit by one charge three once all charges are used up it will spawn a lyrian scytheman now the lyrian scytheman um, will boost itself by one for every boosted allied unit you have this deck does put out quite a few boosted units especially um when you combine it with witcher trio and it has a lot of ways to swarm the board as well um so you can get a lot of boosted value for the scytheman now these scythemen can very easily play for upwards of 12 plus points and it makes it quite threatening for your opponent, especially when you're given round control and you can bleed round number two because of the fact that this deck has explosive points. So what I mean by that is you, know, you can kind of play your cards slow and then suddenly you can slam down Witcher Trio, use your leader ability, and suddenly you've played like 30 points in one turn almost and your opponents can really struggle to you know have any answers for that. So your opponent always has to keep at the back of their mind how much points this deck can do and that makes it very dangerous in a bleed scenario because if your opponent commits too much you could maybe say okay i'm gonna pass go card down and win a short round through with my massive finishes or if your opponent doesn't respect it and they don't commit enough then you can just suddenly flip the switch go all in and your opponent might be down by 30 40 points and then they're completely left in the dust which makes this lead ability in combination with these witcher trios very threatening um that being said, Crystal Skull is going to be the strategy of choice, and it has a very nice interaction with the Griffin Witches, which Griffin Witcher damage aiming by one, cooldown one um, on orders, and then Adrenaline three, it will lock itself and then deal three random damage to um, an enemy unit. Now, the nice thing is if this card does have Veil, it will actually not lock itself, but it will still do three random damage and it'll do that every turn. Basically, the card will try and lock itself, but it will be unable to do so, meaning that it'll become a four point per turn engine once you hit three cards in your hand which actually makes this card very menacing when you are given blue coin due to the fact that this card can end up just basically winning the round for free which is kind of crazy we also play Infamous Assault this is going to basically boost up your um, bronze units typically and help you, you get them out of removal range make them harder to kill you can also use it twice it is an echo card therefore once you play it will return back to your deck one more time which means you can play twice during the course of the game which is of course quite nice we also play Erland. Erland is of course a witcher and this card is very very nice in this deck due to the fact that it is carryover um so you typically want to play this card in round one what it does is it boosts all bronze uh, well not bronze but rather all units in your deck by one and then at adrenaline three it also gains immunity now it is an order card and the order ability is it can suck out all the boosts from your deck and boost himself by however much um, boosts are in your deck now typically you don't want to be using that order ability um, it's a very very rare you want to use it there are some niche scenarios especially in some matchups in round three where you can try use this with combination of that um, immunity to make it you know just uninteractive points on your side of the board but typically speaking um, you want to play this in round one get the carry over and then um you know, don't worry about it any further than that. Next up, we got Vesemir Mentor. This functions somewhat similar to Erland in functionality. However, this, instead of boosting all units in your deck, it's going to boost all witches on the board, in your hand, um, and in your deck by um, one. Now, it needs to be an Adrenaline 5 to boost um, the witches in your hand and deck. Otherwise, it's only going to boost the ones on the board. So make sure you try play this. Um, I say make sure you try. Always play this at Adrenaline 5 or lower, pretty much. So that is going to be Besmir. Another card you also want to try play round one most of the time. You can also play it round three. It's not the end of the world if you play it round three, but you try play it round one if you can. Um, Geralt of Rivia. Now this slot here, this temp provision slot, is a little bit flexible. You can of course play Unsess if you want to. You could in theory play something like Igni or Yurden if you really wanted to. Um, Geralt of Rivia is quite nice though because less breakable. Destroy an enemy unit with nine more parts. Also a Witcher card, which means that it can be tutored by Quinn. Also gets some buffs from um Erland. speaking of quinn what does quinn do it is going to be playing a witcher from your deck which means you can obviously tutor your Geralt, you can tutor your Erland, you can tutor your vesemir whatever you need maybe you can tutor one of your witcher trios and that means that you can of course have a little bit more consistency um, we also play Kelda. this is going to spawn a witcher student on this row whenever you play a warfare card obviously assaults a warfare card and boiling oil is going to be a warfare card so that is going to make this Erland, um not this Erland rather but this Kaldar get a few extra points sometimes, but the nice thing about the Witcher students, there are two point tokens which are also Witches, 
which means these tokens can get buffed up by Vesemir potentially. And also, they make very good targets for you to transform with the Griffin Witcher Adept. So what this card does is transform an allied Witcher into a base copy of Witcher Adept, which basically means the next Witcher Adept can then you know jump on and transform another card and transform another card, and suddenly you can have a whole bunch of shielded units, and it's very hard to kill because of the fact that this card has a shield. And so does each subsequent um, transformation will also have a shield. So this helps give that extra you know, bodies to transform. John Atalus, play a Warfare card from your deck. We do play two, so that does give a little bit more consistency on the Assault. We also play Leo, boost salt by one for every Witcher you control. Do keep in mind, with, um, Leo also counts himself. So basically, if you just play Leo on the board or by himself, he boosts himself by one. Um, but typically, this card is going to play as basically a juiced up Scytheman. There are a lot of Witches in this deck, and this card um, typically plays for just a little bit more than a Scytheman. Um, which is obviously great value in those longer rounds potentially. Eskel, Vesemir, Lambert Trio. So when you play one of these cards, the other two will come out. It doesn't matter the order of which you play them. So typically you want to mulligan these cards in round one. And often you do want to mulligan them in round two. Unless you want to go for an aggressive 2-0. Um, but you quite often want to mulligan these cards in the early stage of the game. And this is going to be your big finisher. Now the nice thing is, is when Vesemir or yeah, when Vesemir and Erlen boost them, they could all get boosted up by potentially two, making this a 15 point play, which has three boosted bodies. And that synergizes great with your leadability. It synergizes with Leo. Um, and it is just going to be your big finisher, basically, for this deck, or your tool to try and 2-0. Um, very, very strong in this deck. It, do, do keep in mind, it has to be an Adrenaline 4, so make sure you only play these cards when you have five or less cards in your hand. Otherwise, they will brick. Um, that is something you do not want to make a um, mistake on. So, we'll say if you have Selective Mutation, draw a card with Adrenaline of your choice, then shuffle back a card from your deck to your hand. This can help, you know, fix some um, brick cards in your hand. It also can help you find some of your win conditions. Maybe you need to find one of your Witcher Trios. Maybe you want to find your Keldar. Maybe you want to find your Geralt Quinn, or maybe you want to find your Erland or your Vesemir. This can be very, very flexible, more consistent to the deck. And also, it spawns two Witcher students on each allied row, which does give you more, you know, Witcher bodies and, you know, fodder to transform with the Witcher Adepts. Next up, we've got Berenger. At the end of your turn, destroy this card if it's the only Witcher in the row. This is also a Witcher card. Now, you must make sure this card is played on a row that has a Witcher or two or multiple Witchers, because otherwise, if this card is by itself, in, term, in terms of the fact that there's no other Witchers, it will die. So do keep in mind. Boarding Oil, damage enemy by 5. Death Blood, Purify, Jason Unit. Just some nice removal. We also have Griffin Witcher Mentor as a one-off. Draw the top units, then shuffle the card from your hand back to your deck. If you need to play an Adrenaline 4, it will boost the unit you're drawn by 2, which just helps, you know, again, fix some Brick Mulligans, a little bit more consistency, and, you know, it's a Witcher card, it's, it plays for sometimes 7 plus points, um, more if you want to count the boost, and not too bad um, in that. Griffin Witcher, we've already spoken about. Um, Spores, I'm actually going to take out now that I have Geralt. Um, if you don't play Geralt, you can play Spores. If you want to take out on Sash, you could potentially put a Spores in. going to put a second um, Radovid Royal Guard in the deck instead. Um, you could also, in theory, play another Kid Winning. You could play Kid Winning Knight. That could also not be a bad option if you go Kid Winning Knight to give a, yourself a nice assault target. I'm actually, going to try as a one of Kid Winning Knight. I don't think it's too bad to play it as a one of. Um, but you also have target practice. Target practice boosts an ally unit by four. If there's a Witch on this row, spawn a Witcher student also on this row, which is quite, again, nice for these Witcher adepts. Um, speaking of Kedinite, we just put in the deck, um, when played su or summoned from the deck, boost salt by 3, this is going to be exclusively used on Amphibious Assault, just a nice 12 point play which you might want sometimes and can be great in this deck um, if, if you just need some proactive points to push with sometimes, um, or just some nice reach in round number 1, um, which can be quite nice too. Um, Griffin Adept, transform allied unit into base cop of this, we've already spoken about this, Scytheman, boost salt by 1, for each allied unit that was boosted, already spoken about this, and Ravid Royal Guard, just um, just a filler card, basically boost an allied unit by two, but in spite, also give it two armor. So that is pretty much the deck. Um, like I said, this deck likes to win round one quite often and bleed round number two. Now there are some matchups um, where you more than happy to take a long round three, things like, for example, Lippy, you're happy to take a long round three, but quite often you do like to bleed at this deck. This deck is very, very powerful when given round control, and we'll jump into a few games and see how the deck performs in practice. All right, first up, we're up against Lippy, which isn't too bad of a matchup. The one big issue about this matchup, though, is the fact that we do play with the Geralt, which is not so great in this matchup, but should still be okay. We are on Blue Queen. Um, ideally, we want to win round one if possible. We have the Geralt in hand, which might find value on something like the... Um, Snowdrop potentially, so I'm still going to hold on to it for... Ah, do I? Um, hmm. 
So I don't. This has to be a Vesemir most likely. Maybe I do mulligan away the Geralt. Hmm. Because against Lippy, it's not that good. If he doesn't play Snow at run one, this could be a brick. Maybe I just mulligan it away. Mulligan away the Witcher Trio too, because you don't want this in run one. You can easily find access to it later. We get this, which is great. It gives us access to Winterbeast Assault. And I might actually go ahead and maybe mulligan away this too then. Um, unfortunately, we find another Witcher Trio. I didn't really want the Witcher Trio in hand. They're not really great in round number one. I think for now, though, I'm going to start with one of these. I'm not going to use the... Sure, Crystal Skull on it just yet. Um, but we'll see what he does in response. Probably going to get killed by a Gutting Slash or Blue Boy. Apparently is going to be the answer. And then we are going to potentially play, I guess... I guess I'm going to play a Griffin Adept here. This is most likely going to get answered by Curse of Corruption or a Heatwave. Not really much I can do about that one. Um, I need to make sure I don't lose an even, but it could be difficult to do so. Decoction coming down here is interesting, so he uses that to kill it, so he plays Decoction. A little bit unfortunate that he got to kill that off relatively cheaply. He preferred it if I could have made it a bit more expensive for him. But I think for now I'm going to play perhaps the Erland. I um, want to get this done now. Unfortunately, we're falling a little behind. It is Lippy, of course, which does have a very strong round number one. And um, yeah, decoction being quite good here in combination with the Lugos. I'm going to take the board all on this, however. Um, so we'll go ahead and kill that. And then we need to probably... I might have to take Natalis onto an Assault for the Mentor to potentially get rid of this. I don't want this in my hand. Um, I think I'm going to play the Adept first. Look at this board state. It looks like I'm probably going to lose an even. I would rather go two down than lose an even. So I'm going to offer him the chance to make me go two down. See if he takes it. I think I'd rather go two cards down right now than lose an even. Get a long round three. Still should be okay-ish in a long round. Um, at least I hope. I promise you a quick death. And then I think we're going to go ahead now and maybe play the Geralt onto the Vesemir. Try to get some more carry over. And then we can go ahead and potentially transform our Geralt. Get the extra point on that. It does pass here. I've got plenty of reach for now. But I don't really want to play my Assault in this round. Unless I'm sure I can win round one with it. So let's see what he decides to do. He's probably going to kill us with the Gutting Slash. Going to go near Mancia. Probably four Gutting Slash. Is that what happens? I think in that case I'm going to have to pass here. Yeah, I don't like losing an even, but under the circumstances I don't really have too much of a choice. Um, so round number two, go try to defend the bleed. We still have a very explosive round three. He does as well. He has a very strong round three too. Um, so depending on if we can keep our... We need to get rid of the Witcher tree. We do not want to be playing in round two. That's going to be our round three. Um, but if we can hold Witcher Trio for round three, maybe we have a chance. Um, so I'm going to mulligan away Witcher Trio for now. And this Geralt's still potentially... Ah, if he plays Snowdrop, it could be good. I'm maybe going to try hold out. It's a little bit greedy to hold this Geralt against Lippy. It's potentially a brick card, but I think I need to be a little bit greedy and try find value with this Geralt. Um, it's very good against a Snowdrop. If he plays like Snowdrop and then Burner, then it can actually find some good value. Hopefully he does play Snowdrop. Unfortunately, Lippy doesn't play very tall, so this Geralt can be quite awkward in this matchup. But hopefully we can find some good value from it. We'll see. It actually takes a drive pass there, interestingly enough. Um, in that case, what do we drive pass with? Um, what am I going to drive pass with? I could, in theory, take it with the Geralt. Maybe Geralt could be a little bit bad in this matchup. Um, hmm. It's either Geralt or Natas, so I think it's going to be a Geralt. I don't... I mean, it could be good against a Snowdrop. It does have some potential to be good, but it's hard to tell because some of them don't play snowdrop and if i'm stuck with a dead Geralt, it could be really bad it feels not bad to also get rid of a card that has carry over the Geralt was boosted which feels a little bit sad for me but yeah it's it's a bit awkward to try and hold on to um so looking at this hand it looks pretty good i think this is gonna have to be the hand we keep um we don't have any bricks in hand this hand looks fine i think this is gonna just be it by the looks of things so we'll hold here keep it and then we'll start off with an adept now the adept has to get killed by a heat of a curse of corruption if he wants to kill it which he might very well do we'll have to see what his plans are going to be on that 
And then we have this Natalis for a target practice, which... Yeah, I could have actually mulliganed with one target practice, to be fair. It might have been okay to mulligan this. I mean, it's not a bad card, but... Could have been okay to mulligan this. Let's see what he does here. He takes the heat wave on it, interesting. So he's banking on that being the only one of mine. Um, sure. So... I think then I'm gonna take the assault. Actually, I need to be. I need something proactive. I think I'm just gonna take this. Take the 13 point kid winning knight. It's not too bad. Not amazing, but definitely not bad. And then maybe I'm supposed to play a Kaldar early on. Oh, he actually does play the Snowdrop, so it would have actually might. It might have actually been good to keep the Geralt then, but again, it's a little bit hindsight. It's hard to tell exactly. Earlier on, I might play the Kaldar early, however. Um, due to the fact that I don't really have much else to play for the time being. So I think I'm actually going to play the Kaldor and try and maximize the um, Warfare tag for this. Can't really kill it. He's played Heatwave. Curse of Corruption does not kill this. So I guess we play this now. Should be safe, I hope. Okay, so he goes for Lippy now. And then I think we end up going for perhaps the Jonathalus onto a target practice here, potentially. Well, has yet can't take, so we take this. But yeah, in hindsight, it might have been good to keep the Geralt. Um, but without final say, it's a little bit spooky to do that. So we'll do that, get some value here, and see what he wants to do. So he does have double final say. He's got a lot of points. Um... I'd lend you a hand, but what a master, I sure. I guess we're gonna go ahead and play this now. Get some more. Get some more um, Witcher students on the row. I'm much better at that. And then we'll see. Could have actually, I think actually, it might have been better for me to actually use the um, Witcher first, and then because my front row is actually gonna get a bit full here. So we we'll play this now. Um, don't think I need to be using my leader charges just yet because I still got some more boost units. So be just a little bit more value if I wait a bit with him. So here comes the burner. Yeah, okay. In hindsight, guilt would have been pretty okay, but again, not really much I can do to see the future and see if he plays out or not. So he still has Curse of Corruption in hand. Curse of Corruption will likely kill kill whatever my tallest unit is. Hope he doesn't draw back into the heat wave. That would be quite sad for me if he does. Um, we'll go ahead and play this now, and then we'll go next turn and play the Leo with leader ability, I think. Could have got an extra point though, two extra points rather, if I, well three extra points if you want to combine with Leo. If I wait, plus played this, then played, um, so he's going to take this, going to probably damage one of my units. Damage, that makes sense. Um, so we'll go ahead now and play the Leo. And then use the leader no, ability with the Siphon coming out here, which is going to play for a lot of points. Um, pretty big Siphon, 14 point Siphon. This is a 18 point Leo. We have another very big Siphon coming up here. He doesn't have space though for the um, Sarahs, which is nice. So he's going to have to, I guess, play another. Um, no, he drew back the Heat Wave. That's kind of annoying. So he's Curse of Corruption. He doesn't have space for Sarahs though. Um, he actually doesn't have the board space for it. So he takes the Sarahs anyway, but the board space is just not really looking great for him right now. Yeah, he just doesn't have board space. Last card, probably Curse of Corruption, but I believe I beat that. Yep, looks like we win this game despite going two cards down. Um, board space for him looking quite bad. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't bleed me in round two, but um, yeah, the, like I said, this deck has a lot of points and, you know, sometimes even being a card down against like point stamping decks like this can still be okay. All right, let's take a look and see what the next one is. Um, looks like it's going to be Overwhelming Hunger now. The nice thing is with Geralt in this deck, it makes a lot better. Now we need to be careful he can't play Iwara Quacks and mull out our Geralt. That could be pretty bad for us, so... Looking at this hand, looks like Erlen might be the card that gets mulled out, which I guess is better than Geralt, but not amazing for me. Um, we are on blue coin, which is actually quite nice, because it means I could, should be able to win round one, and winning round one is great against this matchup, so... Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to lose my Erlen, because I do not want to mulling out my Geralt, and if I do end up drawing the Erlen, Geralt will take the hit, which we do not want, because Geralt is obviously a huge card, card in this matchup, so... 
For now, I think I'm going to end up mulliganing away, perhaps. Mm, target packs can be good, but there are better cards, which are true, not that card. That's unfortunately, but worse. So it made the hand a little bit worse, but I guess it's fine. Unfortunately, though, like I said, we're going to lose the Erland. I'm going to have to leave Erland in deck because of the fact that I need Erland to get milled out from Iwara Quacks, not the Geralt. Geralt getting lost here is really bad for me. Um, so we'll have to let him have our um Erland, it seems so we'll see what happens and then we're gonna go ahead and play the second griffin witcher for now so let's go ahead and do that and we're gonna Can't use the it crystal it skull on it too because like i said crystal skull is going to allow this card to become eventually a four point per turn engine which is very strong um but yeah like i said we're gonna lose out on the Erland. kind of sucks but sure and then go ahead and eat that sure thing um i guess we can actually we can shuffle this away so it's probably fine we don't actually end up breaking it the question is what do i want to put in hand i don't want to put the Erlen in hand because i put the Erlen in hand again the next highest provision card in my deck becomes a Geralt, which means he mulls out of me which is not good so for now i think i'm just going to play this get this on the board and try and kill this brooksa winning round one quite valuable for me um should be able to win round one i hope um but we'll have to see But yeah, the Uara Quacks is going to hurt. It's going to mull up my Erland. I would have, ideally, I would like to have drawn the Erland and the Geralt in hand. Then then I could play both. But unfortunately, I'd much rather this get mulled than this. This card is huge against the V matchup. So, yeah. Plays the Beast. Okay, that is a card I don't exactly want to survive. So, I think I'm going to actually have to do this then. I have to play assault on to the John Natalis for a boiling oil because that we can't let live. Too many points to allow this to survive, and then we'll probably kill this next turn. It seems. Um, I don't want to transform this until obviously it makes use of its lock ability. Um, we can play Vesemir next turn potentially um, if we want to. The question is, what are we going to put in here with the selective mutation? Something with adrenaline, which aren't. Many options, I guess it's Keldar, but hmm, could be a Witcher Mentor, I suppose. If I prefer not to play Keldar on one, which I think I would prefer to avoid playing Keldar on one, to be fair. Um, so we'll go ahead and kill that off, and we'll take the selective mutation here. Um, hmm. I'm gonna take this. I don't want to play Calder on one if I can avoid it. I mean, if it wins round one, maybe it's worth it, but we'll do that for now. And then we shall see. So, um, we can probably play maybe Vesemir next, potentially. Um, Geralt can play. Still could play Erland. Um, it is possible if. Okay, here comes the Rock Crack. So that's gonna mull my, my Erland out. Um, this world needs not much I can do about that, but we will end up losing the Erland, sure. And now I've got to decide, because maybe I actually do need the Kaldar in round 1, um, just to win round 1. I prefer not to, but winning round 1 oh, is quite nice. Art, fella. Hmm. Maybe we can wait for now. Play the Vesemir first, get the carry over going. And then we'll decide from there. Vesemir playing for a decent amount of points. Unfortunately, like I said, we lose the Erlen, which kind of sucks, but not much I can do about that. I actually don't think I need the Kaldar that much. It's not that important. There's going to be another V, or what's the plan here? Second leader charge? This guy's running low on leader charge already. Interesting. So, plays another V. Fine. Yeah. And now we're going to start getting three points turn, which is quite nice. So let's go ahead and play this. Um, ping here, ping here, I guess. Let me go ahead and play this, I guess. Geralt in hand. Interesting. Do I want Geralt in hand? I actually don't think I want Geralt in hand. So I guess I'm going to mulligan that away. It's going to get carry over, though. Now the Geralt's going to be a super Geralt. And that's going to be quite a nice card to play in round two or three. Can also transform this now because now locked. 
So it doesn't, I don't have no use for this anymore. And like I said, this is going to be doing three points a turn, which is quite strong. Plays ADC for another V. This is the last one he can play. He's got no leader charges left, so he plays another V here. I don't know why he's using his entire leader ability in round one. This is a bit strange, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and play this, no, and oh, then we'll no, transform no, no. you. you and I guess if he keeps going, we can play the Leo. We can also play the Geralt for whatever. Should be fine. Um, I don't know what he's going to do now. I can't play any more Vs. Plays the Royal Decree. Plays out a Barber Gazi. Okay, sure. Um, I guess in that case, I am going to maybe then... Maybe it actually is just time to play the Keldar. Hmm. With the Geralt. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll just play the no, Leo for now. I never underwent mutation, but I'm still a witcher, damn it. Yeah. We'll be fine. So he plays another V now. He's not got that many <laughs> Vs left, unfortunately for him. He's going to have some trouble later. So, theoretically, could... I actually can't pass here. So, let's see. What do we want to do then? I guess we have to play this. Um, Keldar's a little bit late. Playing Geralt here feels a little bit bad. I'm gonna try to be super greedy here. I do not want to play the Geralt right now. Geralt is such a big card. Um, guess we'll just transform that for the extra point. Hoping his last card is a card he can't really play. I mean, it has to be another V, otherwise, not how he does these points. He needs to have V here. Yeah, okay, so it's V or a horn. So luckily I was greedy. I mean that was <laughs> that was really greedy for me to to play it like that, but end up paying off. Um so now we have a massive Geralton deck which we can top deck into, which is huge. We have um Witcher Trio, which is nice. I really want that Geralt. Alright, so what are our options? Because there is an action. I think I'm gonna play. I'm actually gonna push here. He can't play. He can't play a V very easily. Got no need to charge. He has to play Horn. So I could end up training this Kaldar for a Horn, and that's fine. Um, he can't just play a V because he can't consume it. So he needs to accompany this with a Horn, which means he probably plays Horn now. Yeah. Um, and now there's a much stronger argument to pass, considering. He, yeah, I think now we have to take the pass. Um, considering the fact that he hasn't. He has, he has used all leader charges. It could be awkward for him now in future rounds. He's going to have to greed out. I mean, as long as I draw the Geralt, I think I should win now because he has to now greed out on a consume, which gives me a fantastic Geralt in round three. So just need to find the Geralt and we should be fine. Okay, so that's going to be another V. I don't know how many more Vs this guy can play. I don't think he can play that many left. Um, he's played m so many tutors, my goodness. So as long as I find as long as I find the Geralt, I should be very fine here. Um Geralt just auto wins this game, I think. Um so let's see if we can find the Geralt for round three. Nine cards in deck is not the most likely thing in the world. They have bricks I gotta watch out for, but it's it's hopefully. Okay, so we can we know what we want a mulligan, I guess. Nice, we got the Geralt, that's huge. Then we should be fine. Alright, good thing we got the Geralt, then I think we're in a great spot. Geralt is going to be a huge card here, and in this matchup, this is going to be great. Okay, so I think we'll start off with perhaps this Ravid Royal God. Ravid Royal God not doing too much right now, but probably good enough, I hope. Another Moonwraith. I guess you say Witcher Trio now. 
and then guess we boost one of them up whatever we also have the target practice which gets another body on the board probably gonna be best assault onto the kid when he knight most likely i think there is a v um go ahead and play this and then we'll probably go assault onto Kedrini Knight with leader charges and then play Geralt last. Actually, we can play the leader on the last turn. We don't have to play it now. We can wait to skip the most points we can. Consumes that. He's probably going to play one more V, but that's fine. We're going to have a massive Geralt. Um, so we'll do this. Play the assault here onto this. And then our big Geralt should be coming out on top of the big V. So Geralt versus V. Last card should be like... Um, Villem into V, I think, maybe. Yeah, Villem, give another body which for another boost, pretty nice. There's the V, that's gonna be my huge Geralt. And, well, I guess that's my Geralt. So, looks like this Geralt's coming in great handy here. That is going to be big Geralt boy, and that will be the game. Um, around one, I must say, it was a little bit sketchy. I, it's, a little bit sketchy but I mean his round one was also quite sketchy but end up taking the win and yeah like I said this deck has a lot of points actually we didn't get to showcase actually bleeding round two most of these games actually did not really bleed round two but like I said one big line of play you do have available to you is you can win round one push round two slowly and then suddenly just go all in with your with your lead ability with your witcher trio and your opponent can you know be left in the dust anyway that is gonna be the deck guide hope you guys enjoyed it i will see you guys again next time and if you have any questions regarding this deck feel free to ask them in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to try and answer if you have any specific questions but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys again next time Bye bye